Today I'm going to show you how to use an avatar and mix three or more mix amount animations over in Blender and then bring those back into your Clo 3D project to sync up with Unreal Engine. Okay, so let's go over to Clo 3D. And to start with, I the first big problem I always run into is checking the scale. Um, and so bring in an avatar. It doesn't matter which one. And they'll be set normally to millimeters at 100%. And so I'm going to make sure that I bring in an avatar here for Make Human and ensure that it's the right scale. I exported this one in an A pose, just like this, more or less, without um, a rig. And so I messed up and I didn't get my scale right. So I had to fiddle around. I had to find a number that worked. Um, and so hopefully you don't have that problem. Just remember millimeters 100% as your export scale from any of those other uh, avatar generators. But since I didn't do that, I had to go ahead and find a way to, to make it work. Okay, so she looks like she's about the right size. Okay, so we want to export here um, with everything intact. So I have shoes, I have everything, hair, eyes, and eyebrows. Uh, go up and export and FBX just so for the sake of the tutorial it's clear and when you go to export it's going to open this window make sure that you have exclude rig turned off turned on rather uh, your single uh, single object unweld uh, I use the 2020 FBX SDK version uh, scale is millimeters and 100% Okay, so that looks good, and I can go over to Mixamo, and this will work successfully. You can see that I've already brought in this avatar, uh, but if you haven't done this before, there's like 100 videos on it. Just upload your character, bring that file in here, and it will auto-rig. Um, so once you get that, and, and again, it shouldn't have a skeleton, and it should be at that uh, correct scale, now you can uh, select the animations that you want to use and download them. I'm going to use 24 frames per second with skin, and I'm going to download those. I think this one was kind of fun too, so I'm going to download it. This one's fun, but I'm going to use in place for this exercise. Uh, we're going to change her position, uh, location, keyframed in Unreal later on. So over here in Blender, I'm going to take away uh, or get rid of the mesh, the lights, the camera, and I'm going to import my... Um, Mixamo animations. Make sure animation is turned on. Hit the armature here, hit G, then X. Hit this armature, G, then X to slide it along that direction. I'm gonna change my animation uh, duration to 600 frames. And now I'm gonna open up the NLA editor. So I'm gonna peel open a new window, come over here hit the NLA editor and you can see these names don't make any sense. So which one of these armatures and actions is the main one that I'm interested in? And it's armature number two. Easiest way to deal with this is go to blender file, go up to actions, find action number two. And I'm going to call this one walk. And the other ones, you can name them temporarily because we're going to delete them later. And they update over here. And once they do, you can then push them down into action strips. Now I can delete these armatures. Uh, they won't fully delete from Blender file. We'll do that later on. So now I have one, and I have one walk cycle over here. I'm going to hit Shift A and Shift A again. And that's going to give me two new tracks. With this one highlighted, I'll Shift, in, shift A in here, and I'm going to pick... Dance one, this one highlighted, I'll hover in here, shift A and I'll make that one dance two. Okay, so type the letter N with a track selected and I will open this window. Change each one to nothing. Okay, now that allows uh, things to be seen underneath individual tracks. Select the walk cycle and we're gonna go to action strip and repeat it. Make sure that the repeat goes past the end of my 600 frames here, and it does. That's good enough, and I'll zoom in a little bit more. And uh, I now want to decide what action I want next. So dance one is actually 
Well, that's going to be dance too. So I'm going to right click this and just move it up. And you can move these tracks around. All right, this is the one I want. I know it about a frame 100 or give or take. I want this one to fade in. So with it selected, I'm going to blend it in here. See that she walks and she goes into that maneuver. And I do want about here to have this other action happen. So I'm going to drag that one over and bring in the blend in at that point. Okay, that's great. How long do I want that to happen? I don't know. Let's just see. Let's play it from the beginning. And about here where the foot is in front is where I want her to blend back out. Okay, so I got to get rid of the extra material here. So I'm going to select that second one and change the end value so that it just kind of goes away. This one here, I'm going to do the same thing and get it, you know, about close. And then I can blend out. So let's see what it does now. Great. Okay. So last thing I need to do is set an A pose for the beginning for the clothing to simulate before she starts walking. Uh, and Clothe 3D animations do this all the time. So I'm going to drag this over about 10 frames. I'm going to select on one of these and shift A, and that's going to make a new track right here. We're going to put a keyframe on that. Um, right now, with my armature selected, uh, just to be sure, I'm going to go to pose mode. Pose and clear transform all. That's just going to make sure that she's, you know, for sure back in the original position. Hit I. And that makes a keyframe for that. And now I'm going to push that keyframe down. And since I made that extra track, it exists here. Again, I'm going to go nothing on the extrapolation. And I'm going to repeat it, you know, for a little while. Now it should work. So let's go over to object mode. And she should be able to blend in. So about here, let me zoom in to show you. I'll do the same kind of blend action. Um, I don't think I need quite that much material. There we go. Move it over. And now I'm going to blend out about you know, that many frames. You can see the little slash there. So now she will go from the A pose into the walk. Into one maneuver, into the other, and then back into the walk. Awesome. Now, last thing, uh, we need to do one action because I don't want all of these playing in Clo. And you can bring them all into Clo, but it's a giant pain. And so the easiest way to deal with this is go to Object, Animation, Bake Animation. And they all have to be selected. I'm going to select Overwrite Current Action. I'm going to uncheck that. And then make sure Pose and Object are turned on. It'll take a minute. Okay, now I have a new action up here, and I'm going to push it down. Um, a way to tell whether or not that action worked is to delete the ones that I just edited. And yes, this is a destructive editing technique, but I don't really care because I just want this maneuver all as one action. Okay, I'm going to go and call this one something very unique. So this one is Emma Dance Demo, and I know I'm not going to have any others that are named the same way. And I can now come in to these other actions here and delete them, right? So delete. And I also want to delete the extra armatures that I have. Armature 2, which I'm going to call Emma Demo, will be here. And then the rest of these I can delete as well. Now that I have everything named, I do need to reconnect all of the materials. So an easy way to do it is go to your materials and find them from uh, your original downloads. So. One thing I have found with the uh, image texture for eyes is that sometimes they're a bit tricky. Uh, you need to change their blend modes. So once you add your image texture, 
come all the way down here and change blend mode to alpha blend and then the eyes will uh, you know click on there we go okay so now the model's ready to go got all the materials ready i'm going to go to file export and fbx and for emma demo i'm going to put her in my downloads folder i have the path mode set to copy with a little toaster oven turned on and i only have armature and mesh and of course bake animation is ready to go so now over in clo i can make a new project We'll bring in Emma Demo. Make sure that it's set to millimeters and 100. Joint animation, cache animation's fine. Uh, then hit OK. And there we go. All your materials are there. They're already copied over. Hair and eyes and everything look fine. Now you should be able to uh, drop a garment on. And you might need to do some extra adjustments. So I'll do that now. Great, now that I have her re-simulated, and I think the clothing fits okay, a little bit tight here or there, but um, I can make any extra adjustments later on. Now I'm gonna come over to animation, and you'll see that I have one action for the entire thing here, and so I'm gonna simulate that. Mine's going pretty quickly because it's all one action and the clothing is pretty simple. I do have these big wings on the pants that do cause some collisions. And that's why I went with this wider stance walk. I'm going to let this one run out. Okay, so now the animation works and I'll play it through for you here. There's one spot where it gets caught and I can go back and fix that and fiddle around with it later on. But for this exercise, just to show you how it works, it's just going to be fine. So you can see it gets stuck to her leg there for a second. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go back over to simulation. Make sure simulation is turned off. I'm also gonna hit save and I'm gonna give it a name. Now over in Unreal, um, if you follow my tutorial on how to use all of the plugin or how to set up all of the plugins, this should be pretty straightforward. We're gonna come up here and we're gonna open in under window, Clo Live Sync Editor. And I'm going to hit Clo here because I have the project open already and she should load. It loads pretty quick. Um, if yours gets kind of slowed down, you might need to update. Okay, so um, now I'm going to grab the avatar and I, I, you know, I could check it out, make sure it looks good. I think it's fine. Her materials are all intact, her hair's there. So I'm going to go up to avatar and I'm going to save the geometry cache. This will take a few minutes. Okay, it's been about two minutes here, and uh, I'm just gonna put it in the demo folder, and I'm gonna name it uh, Emma Avatar. Okay, now I'm gonna go to, once it's done, I'm gonna go to Garment, and I'm gonna save that geometry cache. That's all I need. Again, this one will take a minute too. Okay, that took about a minute. Sometimes it takes a lot longer. Okay, so now I should have everything in there. While it's loading off screen, uh, I'm gonna open up my uh, content browser. And I'll close this window out. And under that folder for demo, I should see uh, Emma Avatar and Emma Garment. And, uh, I'm just gonna put it right into the same scene as I had before. Why not? So I'm gonna click both of them and drag them in together. Uh, I have to scale it, uh, scale her up to match because my other one was at the wrong scale. Uh, it's not a great idea to have two models doing the same thing, wearing the same clothing, but uh, for our purposes here, I guess that's okay. Over in the outliner, I'm going to take the garment and I'm going to just drag it into my avatar. And the reason is I want it to parent that way. So when I move around, I don't have to move the garment too. Um, I've also already created this, uh, in a, you know, the sequence here. This is the level sequence, and I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. 
Okay, so here is the sequencer, and I'm going to arrange the scene by, uh, I'm going to put a directional light in just so I can see what I'm doing, and I'll, and I'll delete that thing later. Um, the original model that I had in my scene starts at about frame 40, but we're going to move the playhead back to one, and this is just like, uh, or zero, it's just like a standard uh, linear editor. We need to bring Emma, Avatar, and Garment by dragging them into the scene. You can just drop them anywhere. They'll both be highlighted. So conveniently, you can just hit the plus sign, and for each one, you need to have a geometry cache, and that will actually get the animation uh, into play. Okay, so now uh, we need to move uh, her around, and I'm going to adjust my space real quick, just so we could see in profile. Uh, a couple things are going to happen here. I'm going to have uh, auto keyframes turned on. And since the avatar itself is the parent, uh, I'm going to select the avatar, hit the plus sign, go to transform, and we're adding transform controls to her. So I'm going to twirl that down and get location, and I will turn on a keyframe for the beginning. Uh, and the basic idea is that you move the location uh, one way or the other, and it auto keyframes, and she'll walk in between. But we need to finesse that a little bit. So, a um, couple things I figured out ahead of time, just to make this easier, is that uh, I need her to stay in place for the point from when she goes from the A pose into the walk. So, she will then start to move into position and then go along. So, I have uh, a keyframe set at 10 frames. Uh, and then I'm going to move up to about 16 here because I noticed uh, just a couple things that, you know, the pace changes as she as she walks. She doesn't just automatically get going as fast as she normally would. So I, I realized that this actually kind of works here, this formula. And so now I have to find, like, where the end point is. So I'm just going to guess at this one. I'm going to go down to about 115, I don't know, something like that, and and drag her into position and um, pay attention to what the number is here. And so I may need to increase or decrease that, depending. Does she actually look like she's walking? Yeah, that's pretty decent. But toward the end, she slows down. And you'll see as we get closer uh, that she actually starts to skate. And that's because we need to go back here. So you may need to increase um, the distance that she travels, and that's this value here, and how long it takes her to get there. Uh, but by setting kind of a target in keyframe, you, you'll know you'll be in range. And so then I'm going to go backwards. Uh, I'm going to go to like 90 frames, just about when she starts to slow down. I'm going to set a keyframe for that one, and then I'm going to zoom in and kind of micromanage this stuff. Now, by the way, you could avoid all this just by not having the Mixamo animation walk in place, but I like to have a little more control over where in the scene, especially in Unreal, my characters are, are going to exist. So I'm just going to have to micromanage this. And all the things I know about walk cycles tell me that this foot should have stayed in place. So I'll put it there, I'll move it, and then I'm just literally going to toggle the key, or toggle the timeline and use the arrow to arrow forward. Okay, so now this foot should stay in place, and it doesn't, and it should stay in place for about that amount of time right there. So I can move her forward and see if that works. Not quite, she's gonna slide still. Um, And so by managing these keyframes, you're doing a little extra work, but you're actually going to get the walk to look correct. And so she's in the right position here. So without belaboring that point, you'll see that you'll have to do a little micromanaging. Uh, when I come back out here, though, I'm going to show you just a couple other things. I'm going to turn off that directional light that I had in the scene, and I'm going to drag in a uh, rectangle light. A little bit and then drag that one onto the Emma avatar and now in the timeline she will move along with. So I hope that helps you learn how to use multiple Mixmo animations using Blender and Clo3D with Live Sync to Unreal.